Hello, YouTube. It's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome to May the 4th Be With You. It is May 4th, 2018, and we are going to talk everything Star Wars that I can possibly go. So with that being mine, let's get started. No, uh, not that. None of that shit. None of that shit. None of this. This is not Star Wars. This is freaking Disney Wars. This has no bearings on this freaking live stream. That can kiss my ass. That's my father's Blu-ray of The Force Awakens. That movie never happened. It is not Star Wars. Fuck that movie. And Last Jedi and Rogue One. I'm talking about the freaking Lucasfilm directed, written, produced, and freaking creative creations of him. Everything from 1977 to 2013. There's going to be a few exceptions here of uh, Rebels, because Rebels is a cartoon. It's not part of the Disney canon of, of the Fly films and also uh, Freemakers, because that's also an animated Lego. So those are exceptions. Everything else is, is freaking non it's null and void. It, it, that's when Star Wars hit a brick wall and became a freaking useless freaking uh you know agenda filled bullshit movies of rehashed you know stuff ideas that we've seen already i already have the force with all my collection that now let's see the real star wars the non disney bullshit that didn't insult me at least rebels has likable characters first i'm going to show this funko pop i i got this funko pop uh c3po the original c3po from the original trilogy that's what i got from the disney rewards i have this Awesome spirit of Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is his uh, after he died in episode four. And even though, uh, whatchamacallit, Alec Guinness was British and he was phoning it in, like they said, he still had, he still gave us something. He was an old man that did more than just appear on a freaking mountain at the end of a movie. That pissed me off. That should not have happened. But anyway, I got this awesome cup of the real last shot. I was something that should have been done, that can never be topped. An original Empire Strikes Back glass cup. I've had this cup for years. It was from Burger King. It's got a description right there. There's the Burger King logo from back in the day. This is canon. This is the real deal, man. This is coin. I got to put it over here. I don't want it to break so because it's very priceless. Next, I got the freaking uh, this book of the Empire Strikes Back, the real thing. These are the, you see, like the world-class bullshitters said that, yeah, the new toys are freaking failing and the new movies make no sense. Yeah, these books and toys of the original canon are still worth millions of dollars, especially on eBay, Amazon, and everywhere else and anywhere you can get them. I offer, yeah. I don't have the original Star Wars, though, uh, the mini book. I have Empire, and I got my favorite movie of all time, no matter what anyone says, Return of the Jedi. That's an awesome image of Luke getting electrocuted by the Emperor, getting, you know, shocked. This, these movies, these two are better than any Disney Wars that you can ever see. I'm not going to show you any of the pictures because the, the movie is it's, going to take forever. I'm just going to show a few. This is with Boba Fett, way better than Phasma because they give more with him. There's Chewie shooting down a freaking, uh, I think that's when he, was sh he shot the uh, probe droid. Yeah. Oh, no, that's when he shot one of the uh, thing. This is the Ewoks. I love those little guys. They're very cute. And uh, this is him. Redemption. You're not going to get this in episode nine because it's going to be really predictable and it's going to suck ass. I only care about this, the original D uh, Lucasfilm Star Wars, because they know what they were doing. Kathleen Kennedy wasn't even involved in the original trilogy. If she was, Leia would be a completely different character. But anyway... I got some CDs of Star Wars, the uh, canon of the prequels. Yes, they're canon. This is the uh, Attack of the Clones original motion picture soundtrack, which I like this movie. I don't care about the dialogue. I'll take grains of sand over a bullshit freaking, you know, uh, agenda and freaking. Uh, did you know that May the 4th is also the day that the leader of Yugoslavia, today known as Slovenia, Croatia, whatever, Tito passed away? Yeah, that's sad, uh, Grand Theft Rubin. I know. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to continue. These are the clone troopers. They look better than those small-headed bullshit stormtroopers we got in The Force Awakens because it's just it seems like a copy. Everything that Disney has done is just a copy of stuff we've seen before. Every bullshit excuse of a movie. I think the films and the novels are bullshit. This, I actually enjoy. Rebels, and I'll get to that. Because that is not some bullshit Disney agenda. Because it has female and male characters. And then guess what? The male characters have substance. Ezra and 
Zeb and freaking Chopper and and Kanan, they actually have personalities and they have freaking uh you know they have freaking characters they're not freaking one dimensional they're three dimensional that's the awesome fight with obi-wan Django. that's a kick-ass fight i love that fight i don't care what anyone says Django has more screen time than phasma he has more screen time than kylo ren he's a better character with his accent and everything at least he's from new zealand this is the two men that got made it this possible i love you george lucas i love you john williams i'm gonna miss you two guys when you pass away because there's no one like you these are some awesome pictures Yes, look at this. Awesome freaking fight in the rain in Kamino. That's Anakin and Obi-Wan. Yoda when he's a badass fighting. Freaking Count Dooku himself. Wait, from here, when he uh, freezes Obi-Wan, well, you know, he gets him caught. The Zem Wessel, who's a very good character as well. She's not in it that much. And yes, I like this love story. You got two good looking people. Yeah, with not the best dialogue, but they're, at least it's not freaking. Uh, it's Twilight, where you're just cringing every time. That's for five movies. This is only for two. So, yeah, episode two and episode three. And I love Natalie Portman. I have said that from the day I, I saw her in 1999. I saw The Phantom Menace in the theater, and I'm like, I am in love. And that's when I hit puberty, so that was a really good time for the movie to come out. I was 14, and I loved every second of her seeing her with that gorgeous white makeup, the red dots, every single outfit she wore, and even in the pre in episode two and three, she was also very beautiful. Here's from Phantom Menace. See, that is a beautiful face. That's a face that would never haunt my dreams. And uh, this is an audio book, pretty much. Well, the box is broken. I got to get a new box for it. But here's the insert. Yeah, got to get a new box because this box is old. And like I said, a lot of this stuff is old. So I'm trying to do it as, as best I can. I've, I've got two watchers. Seven minutes long, yeah. I'm going to make this a long, epic, uh, you know, freaking thing because I deserve it. After what I've been through with those bullshit Disney Wars and freaking the Clone Wars movie, which I don't really, you know, care for because that movie was the first start of the decline. Here we go. This is the episode three, the last good freaking movie in the theater. I don't want to hear about Solo. I don't want to hear about episode nine. I don't want to hear about the freaking... The, the 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 freaking Ryan Johnson trilogy or the Game of Thrones trilogy. If you're gonna cast a bunch of useless English cracker women, I have no interest. I'm only attracted to women from the U from the USA or from Canada. I can also accept some women from Asia, but that's it. And some women in Africa that have a nice accent that have the Wakanda accent. That's cool, but people from the UK just don't do it for me. They don't ring my bells. They don't get my dick hard. They don't do anything like that. I'm sorry. The accent just takes me out of it. And if you call me a racist again, I'm sorry. I'm not a racist. It's just my taste. Everybody on YouTube can know that already, that I'm not a fan. And this is Darth Vader used to a freaking T. Yeah, he's the no. Everybody makes fun of that, but that is less laughable than doing that dish. <laughs> No, fuck you, Kylo Ren, you cry baby. Darth Vader never cried like that, especially in the originals. Here's the disc. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. The disc is still in good shape. These boxes, like I said, they're very old. And this is this uh, three and four. I have all of these because this is canon. Any of the bullshit excuse of, of, of uh, new movies that we're getting, they're not new anymore. Everything is just... Rogue One was the thing that killed it for me. I was like, that movie was boring. It has no bearings on the original. I can still watch A New Hope and pretend that never happened because they never mentioned the, the rebel spies. Yeah. Next, I got some video games of Star Wars. This is Masters of Terrace Kasi, a flawed game, but I can still play it. It's got some canon characters and got an awesome kick-ass character we're never going to see in a movie called Mara freaking Jade. She is Luke's wife. She bears his son named Ben, winkity wink wink. And uh, yeah, and she has a more badass, uh, you know, tone. She has a more badass personality than anybody in these new freaking movies because they're not new, they're just rehash. There's The Phantom Menace. I got it on the PS1. I like this game. It's really hard, but I got to finish it. And, you know, it's, it's part of my childhood, my teen years, I should say. There's the uh, back. And uh, this has uh, cool pictures. That's awesome. Look at that. Great costume design. 
Great freaking makeup effects. Great special effects for The Phantom Menace. I will say this to the day I die. That movie is not as bad as people say it is. Because it tried. It brought Star Wars to a new generation. And I was part of that generation. I saw it in the theater twice back in 99 and in 2012 when they re-released it. And I'm it sucks ass that the prequels were never re-released. After that, you know, episode two and three should have been re-released. I would have seen them in the theater because I love I love Revenge of the Sith. And I do like Attack of the Clones because it's the most beautiful that a Natalie Portman has ever looked post being pregnant. And this is the original trilogy on PS2. I got this as the very first Lego game I ever played. And like I said, this is all original canon. Um, what else do I have? I have another game over here. Hold on. I got these. I got these last year. You saw, uh, well, one last year and the other this year. I got The Clone Wars. This is the, a good game. I was not a big fan of the cartoon, but the game is awesome. It takes place between episodes two and three, so that's canon with the, with the freaking Lucas seal of approval for me. It's fun, and it has a lot of great characters. Asajj Ventress is better than the freaking, than freaking Snoke or Smoke or Smoke out of my ass. I don't care. She's a better character. Everything that she does is like she's bald and she has two freaking lightsabers. Two. Not a lightsaber sword. A lightsaber. Two red ones. She's freaking awesome. And she's also good in that Clone Wars cartoon, the, the, the micro series, which I think is awesome. And, of course, I got this one. I bought this about a month ago. Bam. The complete saga. Read that carefully. Star Wars, Lego Star Wars, the complete saga that means everything that's been made afterwards doesn't count any movies and novelizations don't count this is the real deal i'm going to keep saying that because the originals will live forever these new ones will be forgotten and and, so, and, and, and rotting in someone's basement within five or ten years i guarantee you there's c3po and r2d2 i love bb8 but he deserves something better there's the kick-ass fight between anakin and obi-wan that's a great fight. I love that fight in episode three. This is from episode one. This is from the real thing that Last Failure stole from, the Battle of Hoth, which is the beginning of that movie, which is great. It's snow. And uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. And there's a thing over here for another game. But that's, yeah, that's Lego the Complete Saga. That's what it's called. Everything that, that Lucas made was his story, his freaking characters, his ideas, all his. Disney is just borrowing it. They're not freaking, they have no bearings on the freaking original. Of course, this is the original trilogy on DVD. It's full screen, but it has the bonus disc. I love this. Mo these movies. These are classic. Everything about them, the, 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 even the flawed effects of the originals in the unaltered versions on VHS and in those Blu-rays that are circling, circulating online, it's still classic to me. I love the score. I love the characters. I love the freaking costumes. I love the makeup. I love the pacing. I love the running times. They don't need to be two hours and 30 minutes or two hours and 25 minutes. You're not Infinity War. That movie has an excuse for being long. It's this freaking epic. There's a new hope. Enough has been said about that. I love that movie. Nothing can top it. This is great. Look at this artwork. It's beautiful. There's only one A New Hope, and that's episode four that George Lucas himself wrote and directed. No substitutions. There's Empire Strikes Back, one of the greatest movies of all freaking time. Period is one of the best sequels, one of the best Star Wars movies, and it's it still holds up. 28, 38 years later, and it still feels like a movie that could have come out today. Dead freaking serious. I love this movie. I don't care what anyone says. Return of the Jedi. There you go. Stealing from it didn't help because this movie is a classic. I don't care. The Ewoks are cute. I love the freaking final battle. It has a payoff, and there's not a bit of SJW in it. Leia gets shot in it, but she sees she feels pain. And everything in this movie, I love. Everything in this movie. Richard Marquardt's directing. The freaking finale, it ends on a high note. That's what you needed. That's what you needed. And this is the awesome bonus disc that's not on the Blu-ray. 
the uh, tr tr Star Wars trilogy. This has the making of one of the best documentaries I've ever seen, Empire Dreams. I love every second of that. Well, mostly. Most of the stuff, except for the little crawls they had in the UK when they were filming the original films, because they had some policies over there that are bullshit. Like I said, that's why I'm not a fan of them. It's, uh, nearly everything they touch, they just fuck it up. But that's the original trilogy. Long live the original trilogy forever. And Evers, it'll be with me. Here's some cards of the Rancor and, and uh, Lando, which, by the way, he's probably going to steal Solo because it's going to be his movie and not Hans. I'm telling you, because Donald Glover's a bigger actor since he uh, he's done a lot more than freaking whatever the hell his name is, Brolo. Here's uh, the card of the uh, Rebels. Yeah, the, This is Dark Empire 2. I would love to see a movie of that because that actually is canon. Here's Boba Fett. Kick-ass freaking character. I love Boba Fett. I love Jango Fett as well. He's a different color. At least he's not copying his father. You know, he's not copying the, the, his, his uh, son. This is one for uh, Dark Empire 2 with Luke, who is not a freaking old man hiding in the mountains. He's a freaking badass. He's still fighting, and he's still training the next generation of Jedis that don't have a badge. Yeah. And, and don't have freaking superpowers coming out of their ass. Here it is. Here's uh, Han and Boba Fett. Han's still alive in my heart. There's a picture of Groot. No, it's not Groot. It's a freaking tree with uh, some girl and uh, Luke. And here's the back. Yeah, I'm a true fan, man. True fans have the original freaking stuff because that this is going to live forever. This is going to be worth dozens of dollars, man. And this is the, the one picture of the front again. Yeah. I, I can handle a new take on a franchise. I didn't hate the new Star Trek movies that J.J. Abrams directed and the one that he didn't. Because at least those don't insult. They don't make the originals pointless. It's not like the 2009 Star Trek. I don't want to go on a tangent, but it's not like the 2009 Star, Star Trek hurts the original films. Or the freaking Next Generation or Deep Space Nine or freaking uh, Voyager. No, it doesn't hurt those. It does its own thing. That's what I want. That's what this did. Rebels. It doesn't hurt the prequels because it takes place after episode three. Awesome freaking characters. I like these characters. It's not just a, a fan service. Sabine was freaking in a Boba Fett outfit because she was in a Mandalorian army. Ezra, they slowly showed him becoming a Jedi. If he has short hair and then he becomes, he cuts his hair and he becomes a badass. And season four finale was freaking awesome nearly every episode of this show was freaking phenomenal it was it was it was like a like a mini movie it felt cinematic enough here's all the characters and i know don't tell me in the in the, in the comments when i upload this that oh but those characters are non they're non uh you know canon because they're they're they, they, they it was after the disney purchase but these characters are likable and i'm going to defend them because of that There's Sabine, awesome freaking chick. Love her. I think she's awesome. I'm not going to show any pictures of the hobo because she doesn't. She's she's a hobo. She's a nothing, nothing character. These are likable characters. Zeb. There's Hera, a badass female chick that actually does stuff, and she's green. And there's a freaking the Inquisitor. Awesome. And real stormtroopers. See the real stormtroopers, real cannon stormtroopers, not those mini figured bastards that we got now. Prepare to fight the Empire, not the First Order. Oh, my First Order. Let me get a double cheeseburger. No, the real or the real freaking the Empire. Star destroyers, freaking Tie fighters, Tie bombers, everything. That's awesome. Look at that. Seek and destroy. Well, does that look like a guy that's going to whine like a bitch? No, of course not. There's Kanan before he got blind, the leader. There's Sabine. Now, that is an awesome face. Look at that. And she, this is animated. I'm not going to show too much. Where's Chopper? Uh, so there's, uh, that's awesome. Look at that. The Rebellion. Yeah, I'm rebelling against bullshit movies from now on of any movie, whether it's Disney Wars or Jurassic World or freaking 
any of that. Just give me the originals any day. Speaking of the originals, I got these books. These you read these and forget that episodes seven, eight, and nine even happened, or Rogue One, or whatever, because these are the real deal. This is a uh, book one of the Glove of Darth Vader, the Lost City of the Jedi, and Zorba the Hutt's Revenge. Awesome freaking books. I read these when I was a kid. And the second book, which is Mission from Mount Yoda. See, this is a good book. It is. And Queen of the Empire, a queen, not a freaking hobo, and Prophets of the Dark Side. And it's written by Paul David, Davids and Hollis Davids. Both books. Got this one. The Padawan Jedi Apprentice, The Rising Force. See? They're a little yellow, but because they're old, but I still have them. Got this one of... Jedi Apprentice Special Edition Deceptions with the original characters with Anakin, Obi-Wan, and, and, and uh, Qui-Gon and this other Jedi Apprentice. I got this book, which is also pretty freaking awesome. Look, look at this picture. Tell me that would not make a kick-ass movie even if it was animated. It's the saga continues. Star Wars Volume 1 of a three-book cycle. Heir to the Empire. Rest in peace, Carrie Fisher. I love you. I miss you like crazy. You, you were, you gave me hope. Your face could never be duplicated with CGI or with some other actress. No, don't you dare cast freaking Meryl Streep to replace her because that would not work. The fans will just be pissed off. I was already pissed off years ago before Carrie Fisher passed away. And this is another one. This is volume two. Star Wars Dark Force Rising. We're freaking Thrawn. See, he's freaking canon because this book was made a long time ago. My dad got it at a Kmart for $13.87. I got to take the sticker off. I'm going to do it without ripping the freaking book because this is a this book is classic. Everything that Lucas, is Lucas approved is for me. Anything that's not can go in the trash. I don't care. And this is from the movie, one of the movies I think is underrated. And I love this book. It's beautiful. Look at this. Attack of the Clones, a freaking novelization. I've read this. I enjoy this. And I really think that the film is not that bad. And the book is really amazing. And it's not 10,000 pages. It's about 300 and something pages. It's about 353 pages, so it's not that long of a book. I might read this again because it's been so long. Here's another book with Luke on Tatooine, Adventures in Beggar's Canyon, just like Beggar's Canyon back home. Look at that. If that doesn't stream Star Wars, I don't know what will. Look at these crazy... <laughs> See, at least when they have gaffy sticks, they actually freaking use them. And the do-backs, and there's the freaking, the what was it, the, T, the T-16, yeah, that he that Luke would drive, or the Skyhopper, whatever you want to call it. Oh, teeny! The freaking Jawas, which are awesome. I think they're really cute. The Banthas. Yeah, I just love the original films. See, these are classic. These are going to live forever. And this book actually still looks good after all these years. Look at that thing. A freaking dragon in a Star Wars movie. That would be awesome. And we kind of saw one in Attack of the Clones when it's flying towards Kamino. Awesome. You will not touch a hair on that boy's head, dragon. That would be... I could create my own dialogue with these scenarios because I have a brain. Something that Kathleen Kennedy never had. There's the Dubaks. Freaking awesome creatures. I love them in the, in the special editions. There's Uncle Owen. And there's the uh, freaking Obi-Wan going back home. And there's Luke. You'll live forever, Luke. I don't care what, what Ryan Johnson is an asshole. He should have never gotten his hands on you. Never. Because he's a, he, he doesn't know what he's doing. Luke freaking Skywalker and the heroes and villains. And the other side is Darth Vader and the Stormtroopers. Show a couple of pictures. So awesome freaking pictures. Uh, yeah, look at that. 
Dun, 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 dun. I would have put the music, but I can't. I don't want to get a copyright strike. Obi-Wan and Yoda. Chewbacca and Han Solo. Leia and Lando. Try to show this as close as I can. Admiral Akbar and Mon Mothma, when they're used correctly, well, there they are. Wedge. Now there's that that guy gives Poe a freaking uh, run for his money. And Biggs Darklighter. He's in one freaking movie, and I remember him. Hey, Woozak, Woo Woo uh, may the force be with you too. There's the Ewoks, cute as a freaking button. The Care Bears of Star Wars, the, the Jawas, the Gamorrean Guard, the freaking pig. See, George Lucas, when he made this, when he made these six films, he freaking had imagination. There's a uh, Garandin, the. There's Greedo, Tatuta Solo, and there's Bosk. Bosk. There's a Ak Boos, the 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 Weequa, the guy that was pushing Luke off the sail barge, and there's the uh, Elef Elephant Man, Elephant Man. There's Tess Tessek. Lee, look at these creatures and freaking Bib Fortuna. Iwana Wonga. Yeah. See, I remember that ship because I've seen the movie so many times. There's uh, Celestius Crumb. <laughs> and there's. Oh, 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 Job of the Hut. There's a TIE fighter pilot and a real stormtrooper. Boba Fett and freaking Grand Moff Tarkin, Peter Cushion's real face. Yeah. His real face. The Royal Guards, which they totally ripped off in Last Failure with the freaking red whatever the fuck those things were. Yeah. Stop trying to copy the original and the irreplaceable dark freaking Vader. Next, I have uh, this book of The Phantom Menace. This is before the movie came out. Darth Maul, kick-ass character. I know he was not in the film that much, but when he was there... He was freaking on like Donkey Kong. There's a bunch of pictures from the freaking movie. That's the Jar Jar. I know everybody freaking hates this character. I don't because Misa can take him over a freaking hobo with a stick. And there's Queen Amidala, the most beautiful woman in the in the galaxy. These are the freaking effects that people hate so much. Oh, it's too much CGI. It's it looks fake. This movie started a revolution. This and then the Matrix and then all these other freaking movies and the Marvel films. Look at that. Let me see if this is. Yeah, but it's a little dark, but yeah. There's the pod race. I love that freaking scene. It's the best ten minutes in the freaking movie. That and of course the final, the duel of fates fight at the end. There's the the, the freaking Jedi temple where the Jedi's were trying to talk to uh, you know Liam Neeson, the character of. Oh, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn to see if they were going to train Anakin. There's Jake Lloyd. I'm sorry what happened to you. You didn't deserve hate. I've seen way worse performances on the Disney Channel and on Nickelodeon. There's Darth Maul, and that's not bullshitting you guys. That's the epic fight at the end, which, by the way, Infinity War did a nod to this at the end in Wakanda when they're fighting the freaking creatures in the, in the field. You saw that in the trailer. It's freaking awesome. I'm like, Episode one. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Russo brothers. Not for ripping off, but doing your own thing. Thank you for homaging and not freaking ripping off. There's the sp battle in space when Anakin's in the in the jet in the freaking Starfighter. This is the ending of the movie. And there's a freaking Sidious, aka the Emperor. And these are the actors. Liam Neeson, freaking Ewan McGregor. I know one is Irish, one is Scottish, but they're good actors, and I've always liked them. There's uh Jake Lloyd, there's a mugshot, sorry, and Shmi Skywalker, Pranilla August, she was uh, Swedish, and there's my love. That is the face that got me through my puberty days. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous face. A beautiful Jewish-American actress. 
Natalie Hirschlag. Her real name is Hirschlag, not Portman. And it says here, although she was only 14 at the time, Amidala wields tremendous power as the newly elected queen of Naboo. And I'll take this. I will not condone a, a course of action that will lead us to war. I will take that any day over. You will take these freaking restraints off. Yeah, all of these new girls are freaking robots. I, if I want to see robots, I'll see R2-D2 or C-3PO. Or, uh, yeah, like this one. And I love that the, this documentary as well that he did. Look, look at that. C-3PO. Even with all the butts and bolts, bolts and wiring, he still gives him more of a, a performance than anybody in the new movies. There's Ahmed Bess. I don't think he's a terrible actor. I've seen way worse. I think Kevin Hart is, is a shitty actor in comparison. There's freaking Kenny Baker. May you rest in peace. I met that man. I'm glad I did. It was a dream come true. I was 14. I met him, and I was like, awesome. I met the original R2-D2 in the freaking prequels and in the and in the originals. There's Anthony Daniels. Human cyborg relations. Yeah, I love this. Love these movies, talking about them. There's freaking, I am McDermott. Yeah, no, no. You will die. Yeah. You, did you hear that? Episode 9? You will die. And there's freaking Frank Oz. The voice of, of Yoda, the voice of Bert from Sesame Street, the voice of freaking uh, Elmo, not Elmo, uh, Grover, who I love to death in Sesame Street. He's done a billion voices for Jim Henson. I love that guy. There's the real Zod. I'm sorry, Sean. I don't care what you think. I think Terrence Stamp is Zod. I don't, he's not laughable like Michael Shannon. He this is him as Chancellor Verdorm. He was not wasted. He didn't die in five minutes like freaking Mass Found Cedow. And there's a uh, Hugh. Horsey as Captain Panaka, who I never saw in another movie, but hey, he's there. And Sayo Bibble, played by Oliver Ford Davies. And there's a freaking theatrical poster that looks awesome. And it didn't lie to us. It is a Star Wars movie. It's as flawed as it is. At least it was a freaking Star Wars movie. There's Lucas, the creator of this whole freaking franchise. There's when they were putting the real freaking hair, hair, when they were doing Natalie Portman's hair. I think it's sexy. It doesn't look retarded like in the new freaking movie. And you know what I'm talking about. I like beautiful women with faces that can light up a room. Not, I'm going to haunt your dreams or, or dead eyes. Th this is, this is freaking Jen Russell's face in all of the, in, in row one. Dead eyes, no, not a bit of sexiness. It's like Kathleen Kennedy wanted to make me gay in these freaking movies and make me not like girls. No, I have those movies. I have freaking Avengers. I have freaking Star Wars. I have the freaking Guardians of the Galaxy. They don't censor my 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 freaking manhood. They give me what I want. I get to see sexy women, whether they're clothed or not. These are the freaking uh, battle droids. I think I like them. They're silly, but they know what they are. Look at the freaking creature shop. They actually used practical effects. They didn't put $200 million into bullshit CGI. There was some CGI, but there was also a lot of practical makeup effects and freaking costumes and real locations and real faces. Yes, flesh and blood. Puppets. Freaking real man-made things. This is Anakin talking to his mother. This is an awesome freaking costume. The woman that created these costumes should be proud. I think they still look gorgeous to this day. They're real. They look real to me. Like I can touch them. And they're majestic and colorful. They didn't suck the colors out like in Rogue One. What the hell was that? A bunch of dark costumes and, and ugly looking, you know, that's sucking all the color out. I told you, it didn't work in Man of Steel. It didn't work in Amazing Spider-Man. It didn't work in fan Four stick If I can't see color and it's a movie in color, you fucked up royally. So that was a, a taste of the Phantom Menace. Yeah, and don't worry. This is not a bitch fit because I love this franchise. I will always love the prequels, the originals, and everything in between. I can't show everything, but I'm going to show as much as I can. This is the, another thing from the Phantom Menace, my sticker album. 
I still have it to this day. Look at that. That is great. I didn't want this to just be a Carrie Fisher, you know, retrospective because I did it twice for her. She already got enough attention from me. I miss her like crazy, and she'll always be the queen of the galaxy before you pad me. And, uh, yeah, because we saw her first, to be fair. This is, not kidding, a freaking autographed copy of Toy, Wo Toy Fair from 1998, April of 98. This book is 20 years old. And it's officially signed by Jeremy freaking Bullock, the original Boba Fett. Signed this for me. That was awesome. I met the guy. He was a very, very sweet man. And he's a Brit. And I didn't say fuck off because at that time, they didn't weren't in every TV show and movie that I watched. Now it seems like they're in everything. And it just pisses me off because they not, they're not needed in everything. Sorry. You know what? You know why I love Thanos in the in in, the, in Infinity War because half the people he kills in that movie are actors from the UK. So I'm like, yeah, Russos are not fucking around, Kathleen Kennedy. Your agenda will die next year. It will die. Enough said about that. Here's the toys that are worth t dozens of dollars. This uh, this figure, my dad has it of um, Lax Savrak. That's the uh, Wolfman that's in the original unaltered versions. Yeah. Look at these toys. These toys would never be in a bargain bin. The Rancor, the Wampa, the freaking uh, the, the Jabba's Dancers. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I love that. And look at that. The highest, the, the hottest action figure of, of 1998 was at that time was Han Solo on a freaking Tauntaun. Remember those creatures? And thank God they didn't rip them off in, in the last failure because I would have been like, nope, you got some shitty horses that are like brown and they look that big floppy ears. Yeah, I saw the picture. It looked like shit. I'm sorry. I, I like, I love this. This is Star Wars to me. All of this. All of it. There's the droids, real freaking droids here. That epic fight from episode four. This scene, by the way, this scene, and the scene when you see Darth Vader kicking ass in Rogue One, that scene alone could have been in the beginning of this movie. I could actually see Lucas doing that if he had the budget back in 75 or whenever he did the film. If he had the budget of CG back in 1990, 1975 to 1977, that scene would have been in the movie. If I inserted that scene of la, la, when he's just throwing the freaking rebel, that's an awesome scene because it actually feels like Star Wars. Holy shit, I'm, I'm pinching myself. Everything else just felt like a bag of ass. Look at that. You're not going to do better than this, Kathleen Kennedy. You're not going to do better. Classic. I don't care how much your money your movies make. Money does it. Money burns like when the Joker was burning it at, in halfway through the month to the Dark Knight. Classic, iconic. I miss you, Carrie Fisher. I love you. You will never be forgotten. I'm gonna watch more movies with you that that I miss, like Blues Brothers and all this other shit. The weapon of a Jedi Knight, not some freaking wannabe. Look at that. I love these stickers. I love these photos. Everything about it is I've gone almost 40 minutes now. And there's Carrie Fisher. And uh, the ending when they're getting medals. That's a really good feeling. Every time this movie ends, A New Hope, I feel so good inside. I feel like, wow, movie still holds up. Now i got these posters. I'm going to show some of them because I have too many. I have a lot of stuff to show, so... I'm not done yet. I've got this poster of Ezra. Awesome freaking character. Not just because he's a male, because he's a good fleshed out character. 
I got this one. It's a little ripped on the side, but that's just, you know, some paper I got to take out. A freaking Crush Rebellion. It's already been crushed. It will be crushed next year. With one swift stroke. Because thanks to that freaking movie, which I love to pieces except for the ending, it, it's the biggest opening of all time. Meaning, it beat this. Yeah, that's what you get. Fucking piece of shit movie. Freaking rehash garbage. Yeah. And don't worry, I'm not showing Last Failure on Blu-ray because I don't know where my father put it. And to be honest, it has no bearings on this case. There's Zeb. Like I said, I don't respect the movies that don't take a chance. I already showed Ezra. There's another picture of him. Hera. Yeah, these are mostly characters from the freaking movie, uh, you know, the cartoon, which I like. It's a cartoon, so it's episodic, and I can see it every weekend and get invested, and it has development. This was awesome. Freemakers. This is the comic book. I love these characters. I thought these characters were really cute, and they were tan. So they were just like Finn. They actually have dark skin, but they're it's more than just that. They're actually likable and really fun, and I want to be hang out with them. I don't want to hang out with asshole characters. This is the Kyber Saber that they were looking for. Yeah, there's Xander, Xander, and freaking um, what's his name? Uh I know the name. This Cordy, Xander, and Rowan are the characters here. And I like them. If I don't like your characters, your movie fails or show. There's Cordy. She's very cute. Voiced by a Canadian actress who's very cute. Like I said, Rowan, cute little boy that has the force and it's actually explained. Roger. He's a freaking pro, a battle droid that's actually good. And there's Nari, a female badass that's not freaking wearing a helmet and is not voiced by a Brit. Awesome. And I love this one. Look at this. I want to put that on my wall. Rebel Heroes. That should be, I want to get this autograph one day. Who knows? But that's awesome. That's something I will put on my wall. Never anything that comes out this year, next year, or in the next 25 years. Because if it's not the originals or the prequels, I don't care anymore. Because it just doesn't it doesn't matter to me. Period. Here's a, a book of Collector's Universe. A magazine, The Ultimate Price Guide to Star Wars and the Collector Collectible Galaxy. The definitive, definitive Star Wars. Secondary market price guide featuring episode one. So there's nothing from episode two or three here. And yeah, there's some awesome pictures. Look at that. That's awesome. Look at that. The ultimate guide to the Star Wars collectibles. That's great. I love that poster. I used to have that poster of Anakin and the, and the freaking shadow is Darth Vader. Yeah. Hello. Hello, brother. May the fourth be with you. Yeah, I know that's you, Sean. Thanks for, for uh, you know, making an appearance. I know uh, I mentioned you and uh, I'm not talking on Facebook because I'm on vacation, but I wanted to do this before I go on vacation, you know, before I leave next week. Awesome picture. When Pat me said, yeah, I don't approve. Believe me, I know what that feels like. <laughs> I know what that feels like. And look what it says here. Episode one is full of fantastic creatures that Lucas has always wanted to create but never had the time, money, or technology. Exactly. Then when he got the budget, he did what he wanted to do. And he had a vision. He didn't take ideas from the originals and redo it. He did his own story. I think for Star Wars Day, I'll probably do a video about my history with Star Wars since my friend couldn't come over for us to review to the reviews. There's uh, Padme as the Queen Queen Amidala. You know, I, I just love that character. I think she's beautiful. Look at that. That is awesome. There's the fan service right there. Leia and her freaking mother, Queen Amidala. There's Sebulba. Oh, 
that was the face I had um, the whole time when I was seeing the uh, the, the Force Awakens. That was the face I just yeah. And in and in the Phantom Menace, by the way, Yoda was seven hundred and sixty years old. Hardware Wars, that's one of the like the rarest cassette tapes of Star Wars. It's a uh, the it's a parody pretty much. And by the way, us Star Wars fans, we don't just live in a basement and collect stuff and are a bunch of losers. No, we actually have lives. I go out as much as I can. Look at that thing. Freaking Ewan McGregor on a Pepsi can. That's awesome. I love that. At least Ewan McGregor doesn't look like he wants to slit his wrist. There's the uh, collectible cups and the Darth Vader, C-3PO, R2-D2, and Stormtrooper freaking cups. This is from KFC. These boxes when the when the original trilogy was getting re-released. Let's see if in Phantom Menace Yoda was seven hundred sixty years old, and how by Return of Jedi he's nine hundred. Episode takes place roughly forty years. Yeah, I know that the timeline is a little bit screwed up. Maybe they just didn't do their uh, math. But hey, at least Yoda is old, and he's still consistent. It's not like Yoda became like another character. You know, this is an awesome cup, Taco Bell cup. That's when Taco Bell's food was actually good. Now it's horrible. Episode one will begin a massive marketing invasion of the planet Earth. Absolutely. That statement right there doesn't lie. When that movie came out in 99, it was everywhere. And I was not in pain. No, I was like, awesome. Collectible cans, collectible cups, collectible freaking t-shirts, toys, books, freaking comics. Also, hats and freaking merchandise, mer merchandising that actually was relevant and made me excited. To, it felt made me feel like a kid, and I was 14 at the time. Deadpool, these timelines are so confusing. Exactly. Yeah, they are. This is not an official cup, but that's a Liam Neeson without the beard. It's probably uh, like a prototype. One with Jabba. Here's one with... The freaking Legos, which made, they, they formed into kick-ass games. And I like the fact that in the in the uh, Spider-Man Homecoming movie, they mentioned uh, the Lego Death Star. That was cool. Death Star, not the freaking Star Killer. How Star Wars affected my life. One fan story of how he caught the collecting bug. Yeah, I, I've been collecting Star Wars toys since I was a kid in the early 90s. And I still have my toys right here and all over the house. Yes, uh, action figures. And back in 1977, you couldn't even get the toys. You had to get an IOU and wait a year to get the toys. Nowadays, the toys come out months before the movie, and they barely make a nickel now. There it is. And in Civil War, Spidey references Empire as a really old movie. Yes, and in Infinity War, he mentions Aliens, one of the greatest sequels to ever come out in the 80s. They came out the year after I was born, so yeah. But Oba Fett. Intergalactic Man of Mystery, and he was cool. He has a cult following for a reason. If they did a Boba Fett movie and it was actually a man in, the, in his voice and a man in the costume, I know it's not going to be Jeremy Bullock. He's too old, but... Again, you could do something for the fans and not make it pandering. There's the second Death Star from the uh, Return of the Jedi. These minifigures. Let me just type something here. Okay, um, what else we got here? Look at that. That's probably one of the rarest toys in the world of Star Wars. A special collector's coin with Anakin Skywalker after he died. You know, uh, 
played by Sebastian Shaw. I believe that's his name. There's Mark freaking Hamill. The guy is still a good actor. I love his voice as a Joker. As the trickster, he's amazing. And yeah, I sang to George to the tune of Ch Chattanooga Choo Choo. Pardon me, George. Could this be the Anoga Poo Poo? <laughs> oh, Mark, you cracked me up, man. I'm glad you're still with us, man. I'm glad you're... I hope you get a role in Guardians 3. That would be like a Return of the Jedi for me. I'll be like, Return of the Jedi, Volume 3. Yeah, that would be freaking awesome. This is the special edition, which I do have on VHS. It's right behind me. It's right there. Wait. Uh, right over here. See? Yeah. I really, really love this franchise. I don't want to see it go to ship because it just it has been ever since 2008 when Clone Wars came out. There's the... Um, Jabba scene, which a lot of people didn't like, but I like that. I actually like Jabba's dancers. I think they're really sexy for for in a weird alien sort of way, especially the the Asian girl. Oh my god! As a fan of Asian women, whether they have makeup or whatever, they're beautiful. I love Palm Clementine in freaking Guardians Two and Infinity War because she has that accent that's slight and very cute and. That puppy makes me want to die. I'm like, oh, my God, you are so sexy. And happy birthday, by the way. Her birthday was yesterday. I love Asian women. These are the collectible toys. Of course, the prices are going to be different now because it's been it's been like tw almost 20 years. And that's it. Yeah. Thousands of Star Wars toys in the most complete price guide ever. And guess what? The toys are actually worth money now. Yeah, the original older Anakin was played by Sebastian Shaw and Hamill quit Star Wars and just doesn't care for Star Wars anymore. I only care about the original stuff. From now on, if I buy something of Star Wars, it's got to be from episodes one to six or anything in between like Shadows of the Empire, Dark Forces or freaking, uh, you know, uh, the, the Clone Wars micro series or you know, even Rebels. I would love to get Rebels on TV. Because at least it made me feel something. and made me laugh. And I love the characters. Next, I can show these books. Canon. You got Star Wars X-Wing. The Iron Fist. No, it's not that horrible freaking show that came out on Netflix last year. Tales of the Bounty Hunters. Dengar, Bowsk, and Boba Fett and the rest. Children of the Jedi. And since the hobo's not Luke's daughter, this is way better. Read this and forget you even met her. We got this one, Science Adventures of Star Wars. Only science can save them. Yeah, <laughs> not the new movies. <laughs> Jedi Quest. And I got this at a, my dad got this at a yard sale. Over 20, almost 20 years ago. It's the original book of Star Wars A New Hope from the adventures of Luke Skywalker. This book probably is worth thousands of dollars and it's still here. I love this book. I, I'm going to read this again because I'm like, I see this and I'm like, I see classic. I don't see an old book that's collecting dust. I see classic, classic stuff. These are from the prequels. Well, the, these are the heroes and villains of Star Wars. I got all this stuff. Uh, if it falls, don't worry. It's just, it's just me. I'm almost at an hour, so yeah. Got these collectible posters. This is now. Isn't that a lovely scene? Is it the greatest love story of all time? No, but damn it. That music and the setting and just, you know, the, the, the Natalie Portman's smile. I'm like, I believe that they were in love. Even if it was just, if it was better written, maybe it would have been the most romantic movie since Titanic. And I'm like, at least she doesn't freaking die in a boat or, you know, Anakin doesn't freeze to death. You are a Jedi. Your weapon is your life. That's right. Anakin, when I grow up, I want to be a Jedi. Qui-Gon, trust, you, trust your instincts, right? 
You will be a Jedi. I promise. Awesome freaking promise. And he didn't lie about that. Jar Jar Binks. I think the Adventures of Luke Skywalker book is based on the original script of A New Oh Hoop, at least for what I heard. It is. And there's dialogue that wasn't even in the freaking movie that I would love to see added back in or just, you know, put in like a, a DVD or something. Always two there are. No more, no less. A master and an apprentice. Exactly. Nowadays, that rule is probably thrown out the window. But look, there's Darth Maul. I'm not bad. I'm just programmed that way. There's Sebulba right here. And there's Watto. Yeah, this kind of sounds like freaking the, the, the freaking greedy ass assholes in Lucasfilm. Jedi tricks, mind tricks don't work on me, only money. Oh, the freaking irony. Look at these creatures. They look like creatures from Harry Potter, right? Revenge is the best medicine. And yeah, it will be next year when I don't see the next movie. Be brave and don't look back. I won't, uh, Shmi Skywalker. I will not look back. Simon Pegg in Force Awakens basically was Watto. Yeah. You have a half a portion. What a waste of a good actor. That guy is hilariously funny in Mission Impossible sequels. Three, four, and five, and hopefully six, he'll be good. And I love the Cornetto trilogy. Those movies are the best British trilogy of, of freaking comedies I've ever seen. I don't care about... Monty Python. There's Sam Wessel. Trouble takes shape. And she's kind of cute. I, I will say that. There's a Anakin and Mace Windu. This is beautiful. Look at that. No politics. No politics. No plotting. No war. And not a single freaking time that I saw her was I ever angry. Even when she died... They did her death scene with proper respect. They didn't cut her to pieces. She wasn't flying like freaking Supergirl in space. She didn't freaking use the force so badly that she just disappeared. She died with some dignity. Ready for aggressive negotiation. See? A belly button. Oh, my God. I'm a pervert. No, I'm not. I like seeing a woman be badass with a gun and is actually trained to fight and can be sexy doing it. Fuck you, KK. You freaking feminazi. That's awesome. I love that. Django Fett. Freaking awesome with the clone troopers. So good they made 200,000 more with, an, with, with another million well on their way. Yeah. And I bet those toys are not sitting in a freaking storage room. Look at that. Like father, like son. Boba, get on board. Yeah, awesome. And even Boba Fett as a kid didn't bother me. This fight is pretty cool. It's not very long, but it's better than the fight in The Force Awakens. Yes, exactly. Christopher freaking Lee, Dracula himself, said this. Read it. Surely you can do better. Exactly. You can do better movies, Lucasfilm. Stop pandering. Stop preaching your SJW agendas. That's not what we wanted. We wanted badass memorable characters that can carry on the Star Wars tradition and make their own freaking destinies without depending on original freaking canon as a crutch. These freaking awesome machines, the clankers are coming. Disney not happy with Kennedy because the movie's box office is lower and lower with each movie and that the toys aren't even selling. Exactly. I will take a Ewok and the Gungans and the freaking, uh, Metaclor not Metaclorians, the Mandalorians over the freaking Porgs any day. I would eat one of those just to just to prove how much I don't. I hate those new movies. They want to be the minions and they're just not awesome. That was when we first saw Chewbacca in the prequels. <laughs> Love that. Look at this. Best fight ever. I don't care. I don't care what anyone says. That fight was awesome. It's intense, it's fast-paced, it's long, it's epic, it's freaking beautifully shot. Yeah, it looks like a dance, but that music, dun, 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 dun. I had goosebumps and chills in the freaking theater when I saw that. And my bladder was full. I had to go to the bathroom, and I was like, oh, my God, I don't want to leave for this scene. This scene is freaking awesome. 
Look at that face. The most gorgeous face I've ever seen in cinema. This is how democracy dies with thunderous applause. Look at that. You copy this last failure. Anakin has a sky, has a freaking scar, and we know why. If you've seen the micro series, you would know why. It doesn't explain it. Why the hell does Kylo Ren have a freaking scar? Better villain than Kylo Ren, G G General Grievous. The galaxy is not enough, Lord Vader. Lean green fighting machine. That was badass. When when he's fighting the Emperor, I was like, that was awesome. I finally got to see Yoda kick ass. The Empire is watching. That was great. When he does this, it's the start of the freaking originals. And I'm like, yes. Everything is falling into place. Awesome. Look at that. That is great. Trial by Fire and freaking Lord Vader. Porgs were so annoying in the theaters and they were just simply to sell fucking toys and it didn't work, did it? And there's the originals, Luke and Leia, brother and sister. Feel the force. I do when I see these movies. This is Han Solo. There you go. That man can never be replaced. I don't care what happens May 25th. That guy is not replacing freaking Harrison Ford ever because the prequels, there's a reason they kept him out of it to keep his legacy secure. Aren't you a little short for a storm cute trooper? My cute freaking cinnamon bun haired beauty. Awesome. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Don't blame me. I'm an interpreter. Yeah. See? Rescue yourself, KK. Go solo? Yeah, the real solo. Or that movie with uh, freaking Mario Van Peebles from the 90s called Solo. That's some... Sorry about the mess. Yeah. After May 25th, the Lucasfilm was going to be saying that. We apologize. We should have never made a freaking movie five months after a disaster like that. We we're sorry. If you apologize, I would be I wouldn't even accept your apology because it's too little, too late. Back in two thousand five, sitting in the theater, seeing Anakin and Obi Wan fight and the birth of Vader were both epic moments. Last Jedi gave me nothing too close to those moments and nothing in between. What was what was the freaking memorable moments in those movies? In that movie, huh? The freaking Luke milking a freaking creature or the freaking bullshit casino scene, which is way too long. There wasn't a bullshit casino scene in Avengers 3. Not one. Or the hobo freaking beating Luke, even though he's been trained in the force for decades. Or anything with her. Just nothing. Her getting hit with a stick. That's what she deserves. She should have gotten her ass kicked too. Leia didn't have to freaking lose a limb to be considered vulnerable she got shot at she got stunned she got freaking you know she fell a lot she was human she wasn't some freaking wannabe messiah this was awesome yep try doing the right thing you might like it the freaking at ats the imperial walkers yeah Look at that. See that. That is that would be a great thumbnail. Rebel leaders. Not the resistance. Remember what they said in Star Trek. Resistance is futile. Yeah. Do or do not. There is no try. Yep. A good man is hard to find. Yeah. That's better chemistry than Finn and freaking uh, Rose Tico. Or, you know, what I like to call her Tickle.
Boba Fett. Only thing I may have been like that at the end scene was Luke and Leia reuniting, and I'll admit that gave me a tear. Yeah, because we're never gonna see uh, we're never gonna see uh, Princess Leia again. No Carrie Fisher, no Leia. I'm sorry. As a baby in the in Episode Three, it made sense. Best romance of all the freaking movies. There you go. And when they had procreated, if you read the books, you have Ben Solo, who is way freaking better. He's not some evil bitch that says, I will finish what you started. No, that didn't happen. That is freaking bullshit. That didn't happen. Lando's not a system. He's a man. Yep, you're right. And I don't think Donald Glover's going to top him. I think he's going to do his own thing. He might be decent, but it's not going to save the movie. Make your own destiny. Exactly. There you go. Make your own. Don't copy. Misery loves company. Yeah, exactly. Something that pissed me off was that they allowed Haldo, female, to sacrifice herself to destroy Snoke's ship, but yet Finn, male, wasn't allowed to sacrifice to save the Resistance because Finn is a freaking pussy. They make his character pussified, and I'm going to be the comic relief, and I'm going to have a fake American accent. I'm not going to. I got to go back for my droid. Yeah, fuck off. Encasing carbonite. What you're going to try to copy that in episode nine? Yeah, it's too little, too late. Back in black. Awesome. Yep. Good luck. You're going to need it. Freaking Alden Hag Hagen Reich or whatever your name is. Awesome. Short help is better than no help. Yeah, and there's the thing. The message is held for review. It's also girls equals awesome. Show. It's fine. That's an awesome Empire Strikes Back poster. Some things are worth fighting for, yes. Beautiful face. Redemption happens. Yeah, exactly. We're not going to get that next year. I'm sorry. And by the way, this image, they also stole. Remember when the freaking special edition of that abomination came out? Like in 2016? Like the end of 2016? They used that image. And it's Luke's lightsaber, not the freaking hobos. So that was the poster book. I showed almost every picture there. Right, okay, I've been going for an hour, so all I got left is the toys, and then I'll call it a night. But, man, this was awful. This was the freaking uh, Cooper fish from episode one. Uh, an R2-D2 little toy. A droidica, freaking destroyer. Greedo, who shot first? Well, does it matter? Young Anakin as a boy. Another R2-D2 with the head that spins. The Star Destroyer. The Super Star Destroyer, by the way, that we saw. I'm going to say this right now. The opening of The Force Awakens, didn't mind it. As soon as the Star Destroyer, you see it. And that waste of space goes in, and she starts talking in some bullshit language that they don't subtitle. I was like, yeah, we're in trouble. Us fans are in trouble. We're going to get fucked in the ass. And we never saw it coming. I should have walked out of the theater. I'm sorry, waste of space. I'm not going to say your name on this podcast because you do not matter to me. You're dead to me. Freaking a TIE fighter pilot, which they totally stole this in Rogue One with those black wannabe TIE fighter pilots on steroids. <laughs> on with his blaster. Hoth, that's one of the rarest toys there is. A freaking B wing, I believe, yeah, because there's the Y wings, the X wings, this is the B wings or A wings, yeah. One of those. A sand trooper. Look, sir, droids. A freaking Empire, uh, you know, freaking ATST uh, driver. Yoda, appendices. I will write with it. I, I shall. And 
and the freaking uh t what was it called the um the the, the slave the slave one i believe yeah well that's all a lot of the star wars stuff that i have i have much more but guys you get the point it's may the fourth be with you i showed you a lot of the stuff that i have i love this franchise the hell with the disney wars it's not what i wanted i wanted iconic new characters there was a guy on youtube i'm not going to say his name that said this is what they should have done for episode seven eight and nine give us a new story likable characters better casting and put it a hundred years into the future where none of the original films are touched if you did that i would have gone to the movie theater more than once but releasing an sjw freaking agenda filled bullshit feminist rehash of the original films with cg and it has no impact and i don't feel anything you have a problem and i said it releasing it in december is a mistake it's too freaking cold i don't like going to the theater in the winter in the snow it sucks that's why i'm not seeing aquaman this year but on a uh, but to be on a lighter note I, this franchise gave me so much there's a lot of stuff I can read. There's a lot of stuff I can watch. There's a lot of stuff I can listen to. There's a lot of toys I can collect. And none of it has that Disney seal of approval. It's got the Lucas film. The original Lucas seal of approval. George Lucas. Without him, without him, it would just be called film. Instead of Lucas film or Skywalker sound or freaking ILM. That man created everything of Star Wars. That's about almost enough I can say about this franchise. Yeah, plus if they really wanted the money, why keep the annual May release time? Exactly. May. Hell, I would take it in June because that's when Empire Strikes Back came out. June 1980. Warm weather is a lot better than freaking cold weather. I can tell you that for, for a fact. And there's one more thing I could show you guys. The Skywalker Saga, just for the last thing. The people have spoken. Yes, they have. Because the last failure made a billion less than the last movie. And that movie beat The Force Awakens. Yes, in its opening weekend, it beat it. And I'm so freaking glad. See, the superhero genre is still going strong. It's running wild on your dumb ass, on your agenda-filled asses. Because with that, we get kick-ass female and male characters. And we get long movies that actually deserve the long running time. Look at that. This is how it should have ended. This is the last movie, period. It ended with this. The Death Star was destroyed. The Rebels won. It's done. You don't need any more movies. Anyway, that's my Star Wars haul for May the 4th be with you. May the Force be with every single one of you true fans that love this. That will support this and not this. Thanks for watching. Take care. And Annika fulfilled the prophecy. Exactly. He fulfilled the prophecy. There was never any mention of any hobo or wannabe rebels or freaking another star killer. Well, it's bigger, so it's better. No. Did you see Independence Day Resurgence? A bigger ship didn't mean nothing because the movie flopped. Nostalgia porn isn't ruling the box office anymore. This is right here. Freaking kick-ass villain, kick-ass characters. Yeah, the ending sucks. But if the ending is the only thing that sucks, my God, they did a lot of things right, didn't they? So haters can suck it because I'm like, I love that movie to pieces. It's rewatchable for me. And when, episode, when Avengers 4 comes out, I'm going to see it in the theater too. Because unlike Disney Wars, I know what to expect. I'm going to get a kick-ass Captain Marvel, a female with blonde hair that shows her face and is sexy and is freaking powerful and it's explained. There's explanation. That's awesome. I love when things are explained and not left in freaking secrecy. But not everything should be explained. You don't have to explain a villain why they're evil. Just give us an explanation why a character is overpowered. Don't freaking say, oh, because she can 
tap into someone's brain. No, fuck you with that. But novels don't explain anything either. Those could be recycled for all I care. Like I said, the original canon lives forever. Let me take a sip of water. I've been drinking. I've been talking for a long time. Ah. Yeah. Long live the original trilogy. It'll live forever. It's going to live forever. When, epi when 2020 comes and episode 9 is finally on Blu-ray or whatever freaking format we have, people are going to buy it and then leave it in their shelf for years. And they're going to go back and say, you know what? I want to go back and watch the prequels and the originals because they're better. They gave me something. I'm curious to see how Marvel's de-aging translated to an entire movie with Sam Jackson. Well, I can't wait for Captain Marvel. That's going to give me more of a Star Wars cosmic, you know, freaking fix like I got with that freaking movie. And Brie Larson is a bigger badass because she won an Oscar, just like my girl Natalie Portman. And... She is a American actress that will deliver, and she's gonna kick Thanos' ass in space, out of outside, in on Earth. It doesn't matter. Bring on the freaking red, white, and blue, and blonde freaking hair and the mask. Everything, just give it to me, baby. Give it to me. Oh man, I can't wait to see that, man. Just you know, Marvel has been doing something that Lucasfilm hasn't done in since two thousand five. They've been delivering. Every MCU movie, flawed and all, all the flaws, warts and all, they've all been entertaining to me. And the just like the original trilogy, all of these movies are entertaining. There's not a single bad one in the bunch. Even Return of the Jedi. It doesn't have silly moments, yes, but it makes me feel complete. I'm going to end it on that, guys. Thanks for watching. Nerd Pack, if you want to watch this, share with your friends on Facebook. Share with your friends on Twitter. Just share it because I really, really want this video to go out and show you guys that I love Star Wars, the original freaking canon. See you guys in the next video. Peace.